The coronavirus has now more confirmed cases than SARS did in 2003, with 8,000 affected and 170 dead, uh, with travel and trade in and out of China now being restricted. What are the sectors that will get hurt the most? Joining me today, Gerald Chalente, publisher of the Trends Journal. He dedicated his entire last uh, edition to the virus. Uh, Gerald, good to have you back. Well, thanks for having me on. So, you know, like I mentioned, it, it was the front cover of your uh, recent Trends Journal, rightfully so, this virus, uh, obviously the global news story. Tell us about your views on this outbreak, Gerald. Well, you just mentioned 170 people died in, in, uh, in China. And they have a population of what, 1.4 billion? So it's not really a big number. And then you mentioned SARS, and this is beating SARS. When the SARS hit back in 2003 and 2004, a grand total of about 800 people died in a population of what, about 6.5 billion people. So this is kind of reminding me of, you know, the hurricane is coming, the hurricane is coming. And all the media out there, you know, with their rain gear on and, and the wind blowing and the, 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 the water splashing onto the, onto the beach, you know. I think they're making a bigger deal out of this than it is. Really? If it, if it is. Again, we just, in the United States last year, 61,000 people died of flu viruses. So, you know, I, I think, you know, I don't know how far it's going to go, but when you look at the past, these aren't big numbers. And it's really done a lot of damage, particularly to the oil sector. Right. I'm, you know, right. so it's just, and it's, and it's done a big number in China. It happened during the start of the Lunar New Year, you know, a time to party, celebrate and travel, and places are quarantined, streets are empty. And the Chinese economy is already soft. So this is really going to hit, hit them pretty hard for a while. Well, you know, Commerce Secretary uh, Wilbur Ross was speaking to Fox uh, earlier this morning saying that the virus may bring more jobs back to North America, uh, that it gives businesses another thing to consider when reviewing their uh, supply chain. Uh, do you agree? It depends how this continues and, and, and if it escalates. Again, the numbers are tiny. And also the people that are dying, from what I've read, most of them have been chronically ill already. So now they're sick and they get hit with this and, you know, lights out. And they're making it, a, you know, they, we just found another one case in America, you know, another new case. You know, the numbers are tiny in a population, a global population of 7.7 .7 billion people. So unless this thing really takes off, again, it reminds me of the storm watches, you know, and they do every time there's a hurricane or some kind of other storm, you know, they always blow it up bigger than it is. I don't know, Gerald. I mean, do you, like, are you walking around not afraid? You're shaking everyone's hands. You're going to airports. You're traveling. Well, I hate traveling in airports for a long time. <laughs> I don't blame you, they, but, you, you know, know it's, it's definitely, it, I mean, it's definitely inserted a huge element of fear here. Again, fear is, again, as I said, you know, fear is an easy thing to sell, you know, whether it's in war or, uh, or in weather or in this. Right. But the numbers aren't showing it. Okay. And again, I don't know where this is going. But right now, I mean, they've, what, they've cut uh, air flights from uh, British yes. Airways, Lufthansa, uh, Swiss Air, United States. Yeah, but don't you think uh, that was the right call? You, you know, if you want to stop this, you can't have people going into China right now. Again, how many people left uh, from uh, the areas where it's hit and, and are spreading it around anyway? So I think, I think it's an overreaction. All right, well. That's my, that's my gut feel. Okay, you, you mentioned oil, and there's a striking difference to two decades ago in China when SARS said, can't, can't believe that's already two decades, by the way, when only about 40% of the population lived in cities versus 60% now. So the spreading virus is capable of tilting crude oil and copper back toward their enduring downward trajectories. Are you really worried about the oil and copper market here? Yes, but it's bigger than China. Look at all the data coming out in country after country showing a global slowdown, whether it's coming from the World Bank, whether it's coming from the IMF, okay. whether it's coming from the UK. Again, we write about it every week. There's a global slowdown. So when you have a black swan event like this, this could make a very bad situation worse. And then, for example, 
with, with, with the slowdown going on and you have a com- country like India and they're stuck in terrible stagflation. The economy has been going down now wait, about seven yeah. quarters in a row. Prices are going up. And what are they going to do? How are they going to lower interest rates? They can't because inflation is going up. So this kind of thing makes it even worse. So because John, it right. hits the, so it, and the same thing with China. They have a stagflation issue as well. Let me ask you this then. Is, is, okay, uh, what about this angle then? Do you think the bigger story is that the world is paying for China's censorship? Because China informed the WHO on December 31st about the virus, but kept its own citizens in the dark. Yeah, well, you know. So is that, is that the bigger story here? Well, the governments lie to you all the time. Let me tell you something, Daniela. You know that guy Saddam Hussein, he has weapons of mass destruction and ties to Al-Qaeda. I mean, they lie all the time. You know, I got to get rid of that guy Soleimani. I don't like him. He was an imminent threat. Could you show me any proof? Who are you? I don't have to show you any proof. So why would I believe anything any government says? And again, I don't know how bad this is, but the numbers right now are very small. And it, yes, it's going to have a very negative effect on China. And it can be one of those black swan events yep. that brings down an already weak global economy. Okay, well, let's talk about something you do believe in, gold. Um, ah. getting, uh, you know, getting, getting uh, support here from this virus outbreak uh, as, this, uh, as it threatens global economic growth. We're at around 1583 as we speak right now. Uh, Fed Chair Powell also saying, you know, this virus could have serious consequences. Will this only give the Fed more motivation here to lower rates? What's going to give the Fed motivation to lower rates is just look what happened with the GDP numbers that came out. No, Mr. Trump, the economy didn't grow at 3%. It grew at 2.3%. And it's going to grow slower next year. This will make it worse, yes. And the other thing about Powell and his statements, he, he, there is no hint that they're going to raise interest rates. I'm forecasting that by November, you're going to see interest rates down to near negative to zero interest mm. rate. Wow. And that's going to be very bullish for gold. All right. You've been calling that for a long time. You're a big, big believer uh, in gold. Uh, Gerald, the last time you were on our Outlook, uh, you know, you warned about the escalating tensions in Iran. Um, And then obviously we saw what happened at the start of the year. Uh, Do you feel those tensions are going to come back? Absolutely. When you look at the people that are, are launching this, You know, I say, what is the difference between Hitler telling the people to hate the Jews as America telling the people to hate the Iranians? They're the world's worst terror organization in the world. People believe it. How many countries has Iran invaded in the last 250 years? How about none? How many has the United States invaded? So again, this is the military industrial complex is what Dwight D. Eisenhower warned the American people of in his farewell address in 1961. Five star general, supreme commander of the allied forces, two term president, that the military industrial complex is robbing the nation of the genius of the sciences, sweat of the labors and the future of the children. So it's the military industrial complex. When I hear coming from the, the Washington that Soleimani was a threat to American interests and American people. What interests is he talking about? Raytheon, Exxon Mobil, Halliburton, and what American people? Soldiers in foreign countries they're illegally occupying? I mean, so yes, it's going to get much worse because this is the mentality of the people in charge. Never mincing words. Gerald Chalente, finally, uh, your predictions for 2020 have, have not been positive. And obviously this year has, has started out quite ugly. Uh, it, you know, is there any ray of sunshine, any, any rainbow that you see? Well, yeah, the, the, the thing is, with, uh, we're talking about all the negative things going on. The smart entrepreneurs are going to sell things that are positive. Talk about like elegance, the roaring 2020s. Make it hot, make it happy. People are down. So the ones that lift it up are going to be the ones that are going to reap really great rewards because the people don't want to be living in fear and terror all the time. So the marketers that really understand that know how to do that. Take the Great Depression. 
The happiest, hottest music America ever knew was swing time. Look at the way the people are dressed yeah. back then. You look at the old pictures. From rich to poor, finely dressed as best that they can. And today you can do that. You could buy very cheaply and buy very, very high quality. <laughs> no, very good quality and not a lot. So those are the kind of things that are positive that people in business, retail sectors, and others should, we think, focus on. Yeah, well... I don't think we'll be seeing you in ripped jeans anytime soon, right, Gerald? <laughs> <laughs> it's always a pleasure having you on. Thank you so much uh, for sharing your views today with us. And thank you. And thank you for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed this episode. We'll have much more for you on Kiko.com.